Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Um, This is part two of my breakup story. So if you haven't heard the first part, I highly recommend going and checking that out. It's titled My Breakup Story. Um, I'm having a little bit of an emotional hangover today since I posted it yesterday. Because, yeah, I'm still in the middle of processing it. (coughs) And excuse me, and um, yeah, there's just I told you, like, there's the shame of me putting myself in that situation. Could I have handled it better? This thing and that thing, like, you know, processing or in the middle of processing it. But I wanted to say that thank you for all of your amazing, beautiful words of support and love and feeling me and hugging me from afar um I really appreciate all of you and also I feel that there are some things that I need to say in response to some of the reactions that I have been receiving um the main one is that I (coughs) well this is really emotional for me so when I'm coughing a lot it's me it's an energetic release so um I didn't share my breakup story in order to villainize my ex-partner. So right now in the timeline, it's very easy for us as a collective to get angry at men. I think there is a lot of, like I was calling it yesterday, sacred rage that we feel as a collective. A lot of this is past things that have happened, um, you know, generationally. Also honoring that a lot of this is our personal stories that we have each gone through, men and women, that have received um, pain via masculine um, presence and energy in the timeline. And also, I don't find it very productive to villainize someone. You know, someone told me one time that when you understand spiritual growth and spirituality you realize that no one is inherently good or bad that if someone does something that is hurtful it's usually because they are not spiritually mature in that area because if you were you would understand the real essence essence of spirituality that we are all connected and if we're all connected I wouldn't treat you in a way that's hurtful for you because I wouldn't treat myself in a way that is hurtful for me because I know that we are connected. Um, There's a lot of pseudo-spirituality that is taking that from a disembodied perspective. And I feel like this is what I can sense from my ex-partner is that a lot of his intentions, I would say, are not malicious or even bad or hurtful. It's that um, he's not embodied on a human level, like in this plane of existence. You can be very spiritually awake and understand everything from a universal cognitive analytical perspective, but we are here having a human experience in human bodies. And when you are connected to the earth and in these human bodies, you need to be integrated. So for me, on my personal opinion, half of spiritual enlightenment is being awake spiritually, yes, and understanding the structure of reality and who we are in the timeline and what's happening in the world on a spiritual collective level. And the other part is being able to integrate it into your body and have a lived experience with that knowledge where you're applying that in a way where you're actually making the world a better place through the way that you show up in the world. And a big part of that is how you treat other people and how you take in, you know, your actions and how it's going to affect other people and take responsibility for your impact in the world. And again, each of us has to own our stories, our triggers, everything like this. But if you make an agreement with someone and you're creating a shared reality with someone, it is very important that you honor those agreements. And if you don't want to honor those agreements anymore, that you have a conscious communication where you change the agreement. 
Um, so for me, the reason why all of this was so painful and hurtful was not that my partner wanted to sleep with another woman. It was that if you're in an open relationship, the only thing that you have to build trust, the thing that creates the structure of the container is your agreements. And so when someone breaks that agreement, it's emotionally feels like you just got cheated on because the person did. They, they literally cut the agreement that you have agreed together in order to build the trust. <sighs> wow. Okay. So I went on a little rampage of, I feel like I went on a little tangent there. Um, but what I wanted to say is I do believe that my partner did the best that he could with the tools and the maturity that he had. And I, I really saw through our relationship over the year and a half that we dated that he really did try his best to be the man that he thought that I wanted and the man that I know that he actually wants deep down to be. Um, but he needs to do it for himself. He can't do it in order to be in a relationship with me. And I don't think he was doing that on a conscious level in order to be in a relationship with me, but I do believe that it happened on a subconscious level. And that's not that's not someone operating from authenticity because if you're operating from authenticity, you would do it because it's who you are. The thing about being integrated and embodied in this 3D reality is that you have a value system. You understand what is important for you in this 3D experience that you're having. Yes, on a universal level, we understand that we're all connected and that everything's one and everyone loves each other, universal love, blah, blah, blah. Okay? But on a human level, we each have individual things that are really important to us, individual value systems that are really important to us. And because of those value systems, we have a moral code that we live by. So yes, on a spiritual level, nothing is inherently right or wrong when we get into spirit. But when we're playing the game of life here that we chose to sign up for, and we make agreements with other people to play a relationship game together... It is a moral code to uphold those agreements or have communication in order to shift the agreement if it's no longer working for you. So that is where the betrayal happened for me in this relationship. Okay, so another thing too is this, this is also why I stayed longer than I maybe normally would have in this dynamic that was unhealthy for me in the end because it was not meeting my needs. It did not make me feel emotionally safe um, was because I know that we all make mistakes and I believe that my partner, my ex-partner made mistakes in the situation. That does not mean that he is a terrible person or a narcissist. I really actually don't like the word narcissist because I grew up with one and I know very clearly what it feels like to live with a, I would call it like a malicious narcissist, someone who is literally planning to hurt people because they really view everyone as toys and they find it fun to create pain in people because they actually feel that deep pain inside of themselves. My ex-partner is not that. Um, in my opinion, He's just immature and been spoiled for most of his life in many ways. No one's really ever told him no um, in a way where he actually still really wants the thing, you know. Um, and <laughs> I mean, that's a reality I did not grow up in. So it was very interesting for a while to play the game of relationships with someone who has been given almost everything their whole lives. And of course he's worked for things and he is very good at manifesting and he is does care about people. Um, but he also, in another way, again, value system, moral code, valuing other people and who they are and where they are right now in their lives. Are they good enough to be around them and their energy? Like These are all things that I feel my partner could grow in. That's not why I'm making this podcast. Why I'm making this is to tell you that I shared my story yesterday in order to honor the journey that I personally have gone on and in this shared experience with my ex-partner and also to share what I've learned because I feel 
like the reason why I said yesterday, like I really would rather not make, I wish I didn't have to make this podcast because honestly, my inner little girl is like, I wish none of this had happened. I wish we were still dating. I wish, I wish my partner was the man that I could like really unfold into and we can build the new earth vibration together and you know, lead our community together and eventually have kids together. Like I, I, I wish that was my ex-partner. So for me, it's really painful to have to admit to myself and my community that this is not, this is not happening anymore, you know? Um, so what I ask, like, again, I feel like it was really important for me to share my story because there it's healing for me on many levels that I will not share now um but I also feel like it's healing for the collective of women's stories being spoken um in a way that is grounded and from authenticity and from vulnerability and from raw emotion because <clears throat> we have so much um anger feminine Feminine uh, sharing from a place of anger and frustration. And then also there's a lot of women who share from a place of victimhood. I do not feel like a victim in this story. I feel like, yeah, I got betrayed by my partner and that makes me really sad, but I don't feel less than. I don't feel like something has been taken away from me. I don't feel like I need to be pitied or comforted. I am fully in my power. I know who I am. And I know that him choosing to make those choices just means that we are not in alignment anymore because it does not meet my standard of how I choose to be treated. And once I was able to really honor that and let go of the projection of who I thought he was and what I thought we could build together, I very much acted in alignment and took the necessary actions to get myself to a safe emotional space and get him to move out of my house. Um, But what I ask all of you, instead of, I feel like it's such a waste of energy for us to villainize someone, especially someone who actually could be a very good leader for their community. What I ask of you instead is that instead of creating negative energy towards my ex-partner, you hold space for the man that he can become. The man that I actually know that he wants to become deep inside and I feel like right now he has some shadow work that he needs to do and that is his journey that is his opportunity for growth but if he's able to be supported in that and and also to be held accountable to grow into that man that you know what his mistakes are you know where his shadow is now so you have been warned And also, I really believe that there is a great leader in there, in him, somewhere. If he's able to integrate his human experience, if he chooses to become embodied in the human body, I feel that he would be one of the greatest leaders for our new earth. And I am still holding that space for him. And I am still deeply angry at him. And I still love him deeply. It's all the things all at once. And this is why yesterday, when I started in the beginning, I told my told you, I feel like I have been underwater and like there's just waves of emotions and waves of thoughts and projections and things and needs and everything just washing over me because I still love my ex partner deeply. And I still hold space for the man I feel that he could become. And at the same time, that is not a shared journey anymore. And that's what makes me sad. I can no longer support him in his journey. He has to go do that on his own. So he has the opportunity now to go on his hero's journey and become the man that I know he wants to be. Or he can keep playing with young women and fucking around and being a man child. That's his opportunity for growth. But I ask you and I beseech you as my community as his community to hold the vibrational space and hold him accountable 
because we all make mistakes and we all are trying to be better. And I hope that he is trying to be better. At this point in time, he still thinks that he has done nothing wrong. He still thinks, as of yesterday after watching this podcast, still thinks that I am making things up and does not agree with my reality at all. And that makes me really sad because he's the one person that I would love to and be able to laugh about all of this in the end. But I need him to come to realization of what he's done first. In order to honor my experience, I can no longer deny my reality. I can no longer disengage from who I am as a person and and cut off my own self from my life experience just to make him feel better. I refuse to do this. It's literally I'm not capable of it anymore. And I did it for way too long in very, very small ways that added up to this very big situation. Um, I want to clear up some things. You guys were asking some stuff in the comments of the last podcast. Um, because I share so openly about and me being in an open relationship, there has been other stories I have shared over the course of Fair Day Nice relationship. And I think some of these got misconstrued. And I think it's really important to share some of the details. I will only speak from my experience. Verde can share whatever he wants of his his openness, but I will speak from my experience of mine in the situation. Um, So I have only ever slept with one other person. Well, Verde and I have been dating. I only slept with one other person one time. Um... And honestly, it was a really nice physical connection but I realized that I didn't want to be with this other man. I actually just wanted to be with my partner. Um, and I, of course I went on many dates. I like, I like to flirt. I have Venus and Sagittarius. So I like the idea of being an individual still and having my freedom while in a relationship. So I went on many dates. I also hosted the play parties, which are no penetration. I played with men there with fair to, with my partner, my ex-partner. Um, so yeah, I liked the idea of freedom. But at the end of the day, I chose my partner over and over again because I was in love with him. I loved him. And I wanted to, I wanted to have the option to be with other people so that the choice to be with him at the end of the day was a choice. It wasn't, it was an informed decision, let me put it that way. And for me, that's actually truly choosing someone. When I have the freedom to be with other people, but I choose to be with you. And so for me, that's actually how I lived out my openness in this dynamic. And I will say from an emotional standpoint, my needs, my needs were not being met by my ex-partner. And so there was a searching while in the dynamic for maybe even a second primary partner. And now looking back, I realized that was very unhealthy. What I actually needed was just that my primary partner be able to meet my emotional needs. Just basic. I handle my own. I can handle my own emotions very, very well. I am single again. I can handle my own emotions. I'm doing great. But if I'm in close proximity to someone, if I'm choosing to be in partnership with someone, I need them to also be able to hold space for my emotions because this is a major part of me and this is a major part of me being in my power. And my ex-partner was not able to do this. He did the best he could, but I don't feel that he has integrated his own shadows around emotions, feeling his emotions, feeling negative emotions, having a mother who has a lot of emotions and feeling very overwhelmed by that growing up and, you know, lots and lots of things I could talk about, but those are his story. But what I will say is that my emotional needs were not met and he did his best to actually meet them. I will honor that. And I used openness to try and get that filled, which now I will tell you is not healthy. So I shared my journey very openly and I'm still doing that and I'm still growing. And I don't think any of it was 
I don't regret any of it. Um, and I even told my ex-partner uh, when when we were breaking up, I was like, I'm really sorry for making you feel like you weren't good enough. Like, if I ever did make you feel that way, I'm really, really sorry. Because at the end of the day, I really did love him so much. And that was the thing that really broke my heart when I got back from Japan was that I spent 10, I don't know, two weeks in Japan pretty much alone, like on a a self-chosen, I jokingly called it Vipassana, like a silent meditation retreat with myself while I was going through this country. And when I was spending that much time alone in a culture that's already so disconnected, Japanese people emotionally are so cold and so disconnected, it really showed me some of my own shadow side, my own fears of showing love and connection when I actually deeply, deeply love someone. So I came home from that with open arms, ready to give him everything that I had not given him emotionally from my heart and love and just pouring this onto him. And I just came right into the situation that I shared yesterday. So it was literally like we were going in separate directions, uh, just passing each other in the night kind of thing. It's an expression we have in English, which means like you literally just like run back past each other and are, like you are just not meeting you're not on the same page in any way and you're actually going full speed in opposite directions <clears throat> that's how it felt energetic energetically when I got home um someone asked in one of the comments about me us living with my friend Feta uh in February and like how was that um me living with a second boyfriend so Feta and I have dated in the past like years before I met my ex-partner and then we transitioned it into friendship and it has been friendship for the last two years and he lived with us for a month and all three of us sat down and had a conscious conversation about whether we wanted to make it sexual whether we wanted to explore and it was decided that Like I was up for it because I know both of them and I love them. And also I could sense that both of them were not comfortable with it because they didn't want to rock the boat in the sense of like making our living situation uncomfortable if it didn't go well. And so we all three decided to not do anything with that. And we just love each other. Like I love Feta like my brother. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to honor that and clear that one up um someone wrote a really good comment in the youtube that i wanted to share it says i see a lot of people saying on here that this is why you shouldn't be do open relationships this woman wrote or this person wrote but that's just weird cheating exists in all kinds of relationships and that doesn't mean you shouldn't do them She said it already, but I'll explain it again. In an open relationship, cheating is when you or your partner breaks the agreements you have. He cheated on her, not for sleeping with the other girl, but for not using protection, which was their agreement. Um, With that, and that should be enough to understand the breakup, but there's also all the other things. Um, Yeah, she says more, but that's what I wanted to share was, again, Obviously, I had a very negative experience with openness in the situation, but I don't feel that that is, I don't, I'm not saying that openness is not working. I'm saying that I, like in the situation, the person chose to go against the agreement of the openness. So it's not the actual structure. It could be the same structure of monogamy. If And then the person breaks the agreements of monogamy. It doesn't really matter what structure, relationship structure you have. It's that that each person honors the agreements. That's what creates trust. Um, So yeah, I just wanted to clear that up because I really agreed with that comment. I was like, this is nothing to do with openness. This is because people are cheating on each other. Like, what the fuck? Um, Obviously, around openness, it's a lot easier to... I was talking to some friends about like polyamory and in the polyamory community. um, So this is like when you have multiple primary partners, they were saying that there's this dynamic, especially around younger, like younger polyamory communities, which means like 
the people have not necessarily the people's age is younger, but they have been practicing polyamory for less amount of years. Uh, so in these communities, a main um, challenge that they work through is that when a, when two primary partners are having a disagreement, instead of leaning in and being on the same team and like working on it as the same team and like growing and making their bond stronger, one of them will run to another partner and just complain and like find solace and comfort in the, the extra partner instead of actually working. Like all of this stuff that comes up in relationships is opportunities for growth. It's opportunities opportunities for us to look at our shadow. And if we do and we integrate it and learn from the experience to become more powerful and more integrated and a better version of ourselves, if we're in any situation running away from that and going and putting that energy into a new partner or another partner... Again, it doesn't matter if it's monog- like the, in monogamy, this is what happens when someone cheats on someone and then they like, you know, find a new young, hot flame, <laughs> young, old, whatever. They find a new, new flame, a new love, a new passion, but it's just lust and it's something to like project that they are a good person onto instead of to look at their shadows. Um, and I felt that that's what was happening in this situation. Like, when I left for Japan, my ex-partner and I had things that we were both looking at and wanting to to like work on within ourselves. And I went to Japan and like fucking worked on my shit. Like I looked at my shadow. I, I, I had like called him. I had things written down. I did the therapy appointment. Like or I did an astrology, a Vedic astrology, which really showed me some of my shadow. And I was like so excited to share this with my ex-partner and like share how much love I have for him and how much I was excited to like grow our partnership. And I feel like he just took the situation and found a new partner just like put all of his energy into someone new was like I'm in love with someone else now so yeah whatever happens between us is like great like he even told me when I got back from Japan I think we're actually meant to be brother and sister vibes I don't think we're actually meant to be in a romantic partnership and I was like what you're gonna tell me this after a year and a half um there's so much more bullshit I could share about what happened when I got back from Japan but I want to move on. I'm here to build a new earth. Like all of this is part of my story because it is helping me clear up my energy field in order to create space for the man who's actually meant to lead this new earth with me. And the man, the man all of you have been messaging me saying very similar things that you know that there is a man out there who is a vibrational match and an emotional maturity match and who is an actual leader and grounded in this 3D reality, who will be excited to stand by my side. And I know this is true. I can feel him. I can feel him. He comes to me in my meditations. He's come to me in DMT trips. I can feel him. I know that he exists. And now I have vibrational space open. And I am actually very good on my own. I rock it when I'm single. I like have the best life ever. That's the thing is if someone comes into my life in the future, they better make my life a thousand million times better by just being in my life, like from an emotional standpoint, from whatever, whatever, because (laughs) my life is amazing as it is, you know, like I have my community, I have my, my friends, I have my godparents, I have my mission, I have my dog and my cat and my beautiful house here. Like, I understand who I am in the timeline and what I'm meant to do. And for me, that is the biggest gift. And also to understand that I'm here to serve and I'm here to give back to you and to give back to the collective because that is what I'm here for. And to understand that so clearly and to be able to be in alignment with that, I feel like no matter what you do, in this life, if you understand and you feel vibrationally that you are in alignment and you are grounded in this 3D reality and connected to spirit, then everything is flowing. Everything is working out for you because that's like, that is like the goal. It's not to have all the money in the world. It's not to have the perfect partner. It's not a, it's for you to be in alignment with yourself and with your higher self And to allow your body to be this vessel so that energy can move through to serve the collective and whatever mission that your personal mission is for the world. That is beautiful. 
And I'm here for that. I'm here to help. I, I just did a bunch of human design readings again today. And I, I just love helping people come into alignment with themselves and to understand themselves. There's so many tools, there's so many permission slips that you can use in order to find this for yourself. And I wish this for each of you, whatever is your highest excitement to allow yourself to come into alignment. Um, I have a, like a whole nother podcast I want to make or share. Um, but I think I'm going to save that for another day. I feel like this is what I wanted to say today. And um, I invite you to take a deep breath with me. Something that a lot of you have said when you listen to my podcast is that you can feel the authenticity in it. You can feel the truth in it. I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to gain from sharing this with you except for for me to listen to this and to know that I spoke for up for myself. When I first listened to my podcast yesterday, I like I actually put it on Spotify and released it first and listened to it at the gym. And I was crying at the gym yesterday because I was like, if no one else listens to this, even if this is just for me, I feel that I have accomplished what I needed to, which was to speak up for myself. And that made me feel in such alignment that I just, the whole rest of the day, I felt so much energy coming through my body. Um, and now that I am single again, and now that I am in full capacity and full direction of where my life is going, there's literally so many opportunities coming my way right now that um, I'm going to take the next week and go what I call into hermit mode, like monk mode, and just make podcasts, go to the gym, take after the beach, and have nothing on my schedule. Like, no, I've been so social lately in, in a beautiful way. I've also really needed it, the community support. And at the same time, I feel, yeah, part of my processing is to go inward and to really do this soul searching of what comes next because there's some very big opportunities coming my way right now and I, oh, I'm so excited to figure out which one is my highest excitement which one to do first um, so I'll share more about that as it unfolds um, yeah I have a whole nother podcast that I've written down this morning for you but I will share that in the next one just know that I am sending all of you so much love and thank you again for all your supports. And again, what I said at the beginning, please, not only for my ex-partner, but for any man that has hurt you in your life, I really invite you to, one, honor your boundaries and get yourself into a safe situation and like get yourself away from them if it is not feeling energetically, emotionally, physically, whatever, safe. If it's not feeling safe in any way, get out of there. And also, the higher timeline, the higher perspective is to understand that everyone is going to get it in the end, whether it's this lifetime or the next, whether it's many lifetimes for now, whatever. Everyone's on their spiritual path. And the only reason why people do things that hurt other people is because they're not spiritually developed to understand the effect that they have and the fact that we are all connected and how to play that game in this 3D reality in an embodied way. So they say hurt people hurt people. Um, so if you've been hurt by someone like my father, I know that my father was very abused by his father. And who knows, maybe it kept going all the generations back. Does that excuse his abuse to me? No. Does that make me understand it? Yes. Do I hold vibrational space that my dad could be a better man? I'm working on that. <laughs> The thing is with my dad is like I haven't spoken to him in probably oof, maybe 12 years now. I went to his wedding. That's the last time I saw him. He got remarried. And it's not that I don't want to speak to him. I send him voice messages. I call him and leave voice messages every couple of years and let him know that I'm doing okay and that I love him and I love him unconditionally and to thank him for showing up for me in the ways that he did growing up. Um, 
And I hold that. Yeah, I, I do hold that vibrational space open. I've actually been told by friends that I hold too much vibrational, vibrational space open for my parents to get it, <laughs> to show up as actual parents in this timeline. But, you know, for me, I'm not... I was maybe the reason why they said this in the past because I was wasting energy on it in the past where I was, you know, like literally in my dreams, I was doing energy work trying to help my mom get out of the religion and get out of the mental control that she was, she is currently under and she's choosing, but that's not my, that's not my job. That's her timeline. That's what she needs to do. And even if I did do it, it wouldn't work because she needs, that's her soul growth, right? Um, but I feel that we can all hold vibrational space for whomever has hurt us to um, become a better version of themselves. <sighs> and that's not for them. That's for us to just like forgive them and move on. Because the more that we try and fix them, the more that we blame them, the more we send negative energy, that's us wasting our energy when we could be creating beautiful things in the world and expanding whatever you focus on expands. So if you're focusing on negativity, if you're focusing on trauma so much, you're going to keep expanding it. This is not a positive thing. We want to work through it. We want to look at it. We want to face it. We want to embody it. We want to let it go. That's the goal. Learn from it. Let it go through you. Honor it in whatever way you need and let it go. And there's so many beautiful things to, to embrace and to receive and to enjoy and to let through us. That's what we should be focusing on now. I'm going to leave you with that. I love you all very much and I hope you have a beautiful day. <laughs>